listen to you and Trent on the Total Nonstop Impact um, review, which I, I always love listening to that. I always love, you know, sharing it on Twitter. You listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare, miss a lesson. Oh yeah. Serious like a late period. We are point like a decimal. And we like scarecrows outstanding in our field. Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans featured right here on the Impact Lounge. This is Trent along with my co-host, J-Bone. J-Bone, say hello to the people. Hello to the people. And along with J-Bone, we also have Kyle. Kyle, say hello to the people as well. What a scumbag. Scumbagging it up, baby. Look what the cat dragged in. Oh, literally. He looks like Kyle. And that it looks like something the cat dragged in. Kyle. He's here by the skin of his teeth once again, but somehow, Kyle, you always make it on. I don't know how you do it, but uh, but you somehow you make it. Summer Kyle, of scum. I told you, summer I know. of scum. If it weren't the summer of scum, I wouldn't be here right now. You'd, That's true. You'd be all alone, Trent. What a scumbag. That's true. I'd be, I'd be doing solo casts. Like, uh, I tell you, May, May was a rough month. May was full of solo casts, guys. You know, so it made you a month. better man. That's what it did. It, it, it whipped you and molded you. That's what it did. That's true. It That's just true. alone. Yes. It tested the lounge. It really did. And you know what? <laughs> the loungers guys were there with me. They stuck it out. They were there for well, me. Well, they... you have to remember the ones that commented on those shows and, you know, or the ones that, like, didn't comment on those shows and only comment on the shows that, you know, me and J-Bone are on. You have to remember those people. They, those aren't your ride or dies. That They're not Team Trent. The well, team's coming. Team <laughs> oh, yeah, though, yeah, you're right, though. The ones the ones that left me in the dust. Yeah, those ones. Are team, those are those are not Team Trent, but dude, there are there were quite a bit who who stuck by me. That's right. I got I got I got to say, maybe I should do a little shout out pod for them. I should I should do a pod where I invite all of those people who stuck with me in May when I was alone when I was a lone wolf man on an island over here doing this by myself. Those were those were those were, those were lean times, Kyle. Lean. Jay, I should have called you earlier, man. We should have we should have had you on earlier. But, uh, hey, yeah, it's all right. I'm I'm here now and uh you know proud to be part of the crew and uh yeah let's rock this all right let's do it guys we are here to talk the june 28th 2019 edition of impact wrestling impact on twitch impact on uh pursuit network guys i mentioned pursuit let's let's get the cats let's uh let's talk about the elephant in the room real quick before we jump into the uh the review there's a little rumor slash semi-confirmed news that went out today that Impact Wrestling is moving to the Access TV network. J Bone, I know you were a little more read up on this. What did you hear? Let's let's talk about just for just a quick thing before we jump into the uh, the review. It's it's unconfirmed, but it's it, there's been enough traction on it. Let's just talk about it for a second. Yeah, this came from the voices of wrestling. Now I'm not super familiar with those guys, and they apparently confirmed it on their Patreon. But nothing's been confirmed from Axis or Impact Wrestling. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp reached out to uh, Axis TV, and their response to him was, oh, we're going to look into that. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> so, well, you know, and, and they're, they're, they're not going to, you know, if, if something is supposed to come out at a certain date or whatever, and I don't know who leaked what, like I said, I, I, I take this with a grain of salt, but with a ton of positivity, it's something that's been needed for a very, very long time. Ever since the first start of the year, you know, because like Pursuit's been getting dropped by everyone. You know, I, I, I don't even have it. Spectrum doesn't have it. AT&T dropped it. DirecTV just whoa, dropped it, which whoa, means. Whoa, hold on a second, J-Bone. You're, uh, I feel like you're uh, you're spreading fake news there. You're, uh, Uh-oh. You're, uh, you're muckraking. I actually... They dropped the HD channel. They did not drop Pursuit. They dropped Pursuit HD. Correction. It sounds, oh, way, okay. it sounds way worse the way you said it. Okay. Well, I heard they dropped it. So I was, you know, I, I'm thinking like there's like millions of less, you know, less options, you know, for, I mean, for, you know, people to watch, 
you know, this show now that like Twitch is almost like the only one, you know, I know there's a few other, like, you know, people that cut the cable that can still get the pursuit on their, what, I don't know what the hell they're called, but. And don't forget about the people that uh, gave their computer aids trying to access Impact Wrestling before Impact Plus through the uh, armpits of the internet on the bootleg websites. Destroyed yeah, my no computer kidding. with that shit. Yeah, yeah, your computer uh, is dead. I, I'm still <laughs> getting porn pop-ups from that. All because, all because of, all because of, uh, I'm oh, trying, trying to get to the damn Pursuit channel. But, guys, if this is true, this is good news. I am a, – Access TV is owned by Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban is, uh, you know, of Shark Tank fame and one of the most successful businessmen in the United in the world. Uh, and oh, yeah. I, can, I can guarantee you if a station of his played the wrong episode or um, <laughs> played commercials during the main event, he'd have somebody's ass. So I don't think uh, – I don't think you know it's a bad thing if this is true. I'm I'm hoping it is. I'm I'm all for it. I am all for it. I yeah, think it's exciting. Access TV is a nice little channel. They got kind of a rock and wrestling thing going on. They do a lot of music specials, and they also got uh, you know they got some MMA. They got the Wow Women of Wrestling coming back later this year, along with uh, New Japan is on there. So you know, nice mix of uh, sports and uh, wrestling entertainment. Just not that kind of sports entertainment. Yeah, you know. It's, so Wow was on Access. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, they 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 debuted that uh, earlier this year, and and uh, they just shot part of season two in uh, middle of May, and they just confirmed another set of tapings for September. So, yeah, when when Wow Wow Women of, when Wow Women of Wrestling comes back this fall, man, they're going to be firing on all cylinders. I uh, can't wait to see those ladies kicking ass again. Great okay, show. Okay. Is New Japan <clears throat> still on Access? Oh yeah, yeah. In fact, they well, and, that, and that's the little bummer part of it. Uh, they moved them both to Saturday nights. So mm-hmm. you know, it, it, you know, we don't know if and when the day is going to hit where uh, where Impact. Where, they're going to put impact in to their, you know, weekly schedule. I think fans are hoping for Thursday nights again. We'll see, mm-hmm. you know, or they'll just, you know, throw them all, all on um, Saturdays. One big shebang. Who knows? Could yeah, be, we'll uh, see. A potential hot spot for pro wrestling on TV. Hopefully it works out better than uh, Destination America did when they put Ring of Honor and Impact together. But I have faith in this. The WOW show. New Japan, and the cherry on top, the best of all, Impact Wrestling. I, but here's the there thing, fellas. Go. If Impact Wrestling really is going to access TV, because uh, so far, you know, rumor and speculation, or as me and Trent like to call it, a numer. It's just a numer. It's a news-based rumor. But if the channel does pick up Impact Wrestling, fellas, what day of the week do you guys think that Impact would be best suited for? I personally, I I wouldn't mind a Wednesday. Wednesday is an easy day. It's middle of the week. Well, 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 Trent. Uh, the story going around is that All Elite Wrestling is going to be airing their show on Wednesday night, and well, I don't think they bitch. should go head to head. Yeah, exactly. So no. <laughs> either don't go head to head with them, or you know, put them on late at night. I, I don't know. I just I don't want them to get the uh, the graveyard uh, shift. You know, the the I don't want them to be too late at night. And also, you don't want that uh, Friday night death slot. You don't want that. Uh, so it, it's tough. It's really tough. There's a lot of pro wrestling going on. Uh, listeners, I want to hear from you guys right now in the comments. Let us know what day of the week do you think Impact Wrestling would be perfect for? Or would you just keep it on uh, Thursdays? Or go back to I, Thursdays? If you I want. like Thursdays. Thursdays fine, too. Thursdays yeah. great. Yeah. I'm okay with Thursday. Yeah, I agree. Thursdays. It's it's open. There's nothing else on that they'd be competing with, so why not? Everybody goes out on <clears> Friday <throat> night. You know, Friday night is such a tough night for TV. Especially in the summertime. You know, Friday's tough, man. Thursday night. I'm saying Thursday night would be better. I mean, the Friday night slot, it's just, it's not good. I mean, they haven't been doing terrible with it, but I just feel like Impact Wrestling would be perfect for its good old Thursday night airing. Yeah. It would be nice. It's not what they're associated with. You know, I, I, it's what they were originally built on was that Thursday. I like that about them. You know, I, I love Thursday. Thursday's a good day, man. Next day is Friday. It's chill. Why not? 
But wait, so AEW is doing Wednesday? That's the idea? That's they're the doing rumor. Wednesday? The rumor is the show is going to be called Wednesday Night Dynamite, and uh, that's the rumor. But another numer. Just another numer. Hey, Trent, uh, Trent i got to ask you a question. Uh, I don't know if this is on my end. Uh, does J-Bone cut out like every, like, like, he gets like a full sentence in and then he like chips out for a second? Or is that yeah, just through my Yeah, I'm getting that too. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. driving me insane. J-Bone, I love you. I can't, I can't have you interrupted. You know, I need the, I need the full bone. In I need my you to ass. Be fully torqued, J-Bone. I need you to be uh, at full, at full Wi-Fi erection, you know? I, it's, <laughs> it's weird. It like, it like chips you at the end of your sentence. It's weird. But in the meantime, we got a good show to do. We're on the we're on the road to Slammiversary 2019. Slammiversary 17 is uh is almost here, but we have a show that's built up nicely to it. June 28th, 2019 edition of Impact Wrestling. Let's jump right in, boys. Let's get in. We kicked off hot. Hot hot. This was the North taking on the Deaners. So Ethan Page and Josh Alexander versus Cody and Cousin Jake. Uh, interesting matchup, right? Everybody except Jake is Canadian in that ring. But, um, this was, uh, you know, on paper, you look at it, it's like, ah, the North's going to kill him. Yeah, you know, they're going to kill him. It's, it's, but I love that they got like 12 minutes. It was great. I think a lot of times they told, there was storytelling in this match. What do you think, Jay? Well, this was a great back and forth match. I mean, yeah, on paper you know that the north are badasses and now the and and i can say that because just the short time that they've been on impact wrestling yeah. they just come off as that i mean ethan page comes down kind of as a kind of the happy-go-lucky guy down to the ring he's a little more a little more snarky dude the did you see the look on josh alexander's face as he was coming down to the ring he was already busted he, he probably pulled a goldberg yes. in the back Good observation. He was already, he had a cut on his, uh, was it his, his forehead? Was it his yeah, forehead? yeah. A bridge of his nose, forehead, and just had that little trickle of blood there. So he came down to the ring with this look on his face like, I'm going to kill someone when I get to the ring. Just, just, just so you know. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> maybe yeah. Eddie Edwards took a chomp out of his face as well. Yeah, maybe, man. Eddie Edwards is feasting on people's faces out there. Who the hell knows what's going on in yeah. the back? But maybe, good he was, uh, maybe he was enjoying his wife during her time of the month. <laughs> what a scumbag! That's enough. Oh, That's enough. We, we, are we are trying to be an official Impact podcaster, Kyle. What are you doing? Oh. Oh, at this point, at this point, Trent, out of all, out of all the awful things I've said up until this point, that that's it. The period joke. That's it. That's that's what's gonna nail in the coffin. That's it. They're gonna crucify you for things like that. What a scumbag! Well, <laughs> but uh, uh, but guys, good match. I the North takes the win on this one. They uh, they they hit their their move their their finisher on Cody again. Going back to what I always say, I want names for finishing moves, guys. I want names. You got to brand your finishing moves. I don't like it when finishing moves aren't branded. I think there's so much opportunity left on the table when you don't put a name to your finishing move people fans like that stuff they like going and calling for it and doing it themselves at home or you know making a making kitschy t-shirts or signs out of it like brand the finishing moves that's a cool move that they got i think their finisher is awesome the north let's see it let's see it named well, uh, what do you got i i noticed though that the deaners did a good job of uh pleasing you with that they were setting her up for what to get her the giver. The giver, yeah, the giver. Sure. I'm thinking it, that's like a play on get her done, giver, you know, yeah. these these Southerners and their damn catchphrases. It's it's like Canadian rednecks. Yeah, exactly. That's their yeah. thing. That's their thing. Yeah. But Jake, uh, Jake's the man. I, I'm a big fan of Jake. He's, a, he's That's my boy, man. Jake is, is a great dude, and he's a, he's a powerhouse. He's a big boy. You guys see that. He's a, he's a big gentleman. He can, uh, he he can is, take some shit he up. He is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when he was going toe-to-toe with Josh Alexander, it really put in perspective how big Josh Alexander is too. I was like, "Oh, these guys are practically staring nose to nose, man." It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you see, and it's not to knock uh, Cody Deaner, but he is smaller than Jake. Jake's like a kind of a you know like a big redneck, like a kind of a woodsman kind of dude, you know? Yeah, he's a big, <coughs> big old country boy, man. But uh, oh yeah. They're fun, man. I think Cody brings some fun to the to the table, which I like. I mean, they're all big guys and, and all tough guys. We you know you got Cody in there, kind of the scrappy one, and he's he's making some some shit happen. I like that. And uh, 
<laughs> but North takes it on this one, guys. What's up? It's it's hard to take him seriously though. Sometimes, man, freaking that pig squeal that he lets oh yeah out in the middle of the thing, and sometimes someone or sometimes someone in the crowd does it. It's like <laughs> we uh we opened the podcast with that a few times. Kyle had that at the beginning of the podcast. The uh the Cody the Cody Diener squeal. Oh, last week I was hitting that bite nonstop. Yeah, it. you hit a lot. Oh, yeah. That's right. Also, while we're talking about uh, introductions of the podcast, Trent, we have to mention uh, shout out to Rohit Raju, aka Hakeem Zane. Uh, you know, right at the intro here, I had to play that clip. Uh, BQ sat down with him and cut a nice, great interview. I really enjoyed it. Good job by BQ, by the way. And in the interview. He said that he listens to our reviews, so of course, of course, I had the two hour horn and put that in the introduction this week. So thank you, Hakeem slash Rohit. Really appreciate that. Big, uh, awesome. big thank you, big thank you. I'm a big fan of his. I don't know if you guys yeah. saw it. There was there was a there was a promo that he cut in the ring uh, for I believe it was PPW in, in Michigan this past weekend, and he's straight. Spitting fire, man. Mike, I mean, Mike Fire is what he's what he's spitting this past weekend. Uh, did you guys catch that? Did you guys see that floating around Twitter? No, oh, I missed it. Oh, oh dude, I re- it was fantastic. I gotta say, if Impact Management doesn't, uh, you know, position him to speak like that on their television show down the line, I mean, they're they're making a big mistake. I want to see that side of Rohit. You know, just uh, oh yeah. Totally uh, a side of his character that, you know, we, we know nothing about. I, he proved himself to me as a fan in that clip. Yeah, dude, he uh, he was he's great, man. I mean, what a – you got get that mic time. Just give him mic time. He just – he obviously can do it. That You got to You got to check this out, man. You got to listen. I retweeted it. Take a look on my timeline. We'll do uh, it. It's fantastic. So nice. we'll see where it goes. All right, guys, so that North takes that one. We move on from that. Ty is in the back with uh, Rosemary, and uh, basically they talk about them teaming up because it's one of those things where uh, Rosemary, ex- has, she agreed to help Taya in exchange for a title opportunity. So they're in the back, and Rosemary and Ty is, you know, Ty is a, Ty is a valley girl, basically. She's not happy about uh, having to go into this this dungeon of Rosemary's, and so they talk a little bit. Later later on tonight, they got that match, so we'll see a, kind of a little buildup for that match, so. Um, where do you guys think real quick? I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on this until we get to the knockouts match, but do you think we should go back to a Rosemary title, you know, title run or a title pursuit or, uh, or we got to, do we have other knockouts we got to look at right now? Cause right now they're positioning Rosemary back into this. What do you think? Uh, that's a tough one. I mean, there's so, so many hot. Uh, and I don't mean hot as in looks. Please don't, you know, twist that. Uh, hot as in great knockouts that that are are all, you know, did they're getting to that point, you know, where some of them, you know, you could definitely put it on them and they could just run with it. And then some think need a little more, a little more time, like this, uh, like this buildup of Kiara Hogan. I think we need to slow burn her as a heel for a little longer. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. I mean, the the division is tremendous right now. Um, it's that that's a tough one. Yeah, maybe down the line we got we get a little uh, we can get Rosemary back in. But I think right now you got a lot a lot more going on. So, um, but we'll we'll get to the knockouts match in a second. We got uh, we're in the back real quick, and it's um it's a uh, rec- <laughs> it's it's the investigative reporter. Ronaldo Manet. See, I wrote it down because. Because I always fuck it up too. Ronaldo Menendez. Ronaldo. Men- Ronald- <laughs> Ronald- <laughs> Why am I messing this up? I've said this before. I've talked about him before. Menendez. Menendez. Yeah, he's in the back. I'll say it. Say it. You continue. Ronaldo Menendez. Is it Ronaldo? I don't, I don't know. It was Ronaldo? Was it Ronaldo? It was Ronaldo. Was it it's Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Is it Ronaldo? It's okay. Ronaldo. So now I'm second guessing myself. <laughs> What the hell? I, I feel I, like it isn't. I feel like J Bone is wrong, but like I, I knew what it was before you guys started saying that, and now I'm confused. Now Ro- I don't even know what it's. It's Rolando, name. Rolando, guys, Rolando, 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 Not Rolando, Rolando Menendez, Rolando Menendez. Damn it, I wrote it down wrong. That's what I knew. I was like, wait a minute, uh, I might guess myself. Rolando Menendez, investigative reporter. That's who that is. But 
Um, he catches up with a doctor, Dr. Ariel, who, uh, you know, who basically is saying cage is not cleared. He's not letting him go. He's not letting the champ have his match. So, uh, that's going to be interesting later, later in the evening. So, you know, doctors and wrestling, they never work out. They never, and they make an on-screen appearance. It never works out. But, uh, we got, we clipped. Now guys, I want to ask you guys about this Shout in a second. Shout out to Dr. Fishman, by the way. Only a select few, uh, TNA nuts will get that reference. Talking Good old Dr. Doctors. Fishman. Dr. Fishman. Good old Dr. Fishman. But, guys, Dr. we get some Stevie. footage. Dr. Stevie, too, has another doctor and then the old TNA <laughs> days. Uh, we get some footage sent to us from House of Hardcore, and it's Moose attacking Tommy Dreamer on a House of Hardcore show over the weekend, or the previous weekend. And uh, he's basically saying it's Rob Van Dam's fault. I they, they, they stepped away from this for a little bit, guys. I love when they bring in that footage of their guys on other events around the country. I love it. I'm a big fan of them not denying the fact that their guys are on other shows and sometimes even continuing storylines. What do you think about that, J-Bone? Do you want to see more of that, or do you like that they show less of it now? Oh, it just it just adds build. You know, it adds a little more um, kind of like realness, like, uh, like oh, this, this isn't just happening on, on this show. This is happening at other house shows, too. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Just adds a little more beef, a little more weight to the to the uh, rivalry. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, Kyle, what do you think, man? I think we talked about this back early uh, on. When they were doing a lot of it I, too. I was uh, always pro uh, them using the outside footage because I ju- I hate the idea that you know this is an impact universe and there's nothing going on outside of it. It's more realistic. Uh, he, they can do more things on the fly, uh, you know, make things a little more exciting. And also, I mean, what would be the point of hiding it when all of the one night only shows are, you know, uh, co-promoted with independent companies? I mean, it all makes sense, you know? Yeah, I, oh, I agree. Look, I agree. Look at what they were doing a year ago. They were splicing in uh, parts of matches from uh, Eddie Edwards when he was over Noah. And then, like, a couple matches later, they were splicing in stuff when Brian Cage was on his undefeated streak down in Mexico. You know? Yeah. And, exactly. and that added so much uh, variety and um, different uh, – it's like, you know, different seasoning. It was yep. all throughout the uh, – it's, All throughout the episode. It's almost like it's uh, presented in a way where it's less about the brand and more about the wrestlers. And that's awesome. You know? Yes. Yes. I Which agree. is good for the brand, though. Absolutely. It it shows a more global feel to the whole thing. Like, hey, you know, we, our guys are – they do a lot of stuff. Our guys are busy. The Impact guys are doing something. They're always on the move. It, it looks good. But uh, cool. Let's, let's jump over. Ta- Knockouts tag match. Ty and Rosemary taking on Sue Young and Havoc. Um, I just got to say real quick, I love Sue's entrance is one of the best. I wanted to just keep getting, I wanted to keep building it more and more. I think her entrance is great, but, um, no, hold on, Chris, Trent, I'm going to cut yeah. you off because I've been, Whoa. I've been following, uh, your, uh, your takes on the Sue Young entrance for quite some time. I mean, we've been doing the show together for, uh, about a year or so now, uh, almost a year, Kyle, almost, almost exactly a year. When is the big anniversary, by the way? Do, do you have that information? Cause you know, I believe my we have- doesn't have it. We officially became Total Nonstop Impact. I believe it's going to be next week, I believe. Oh, I, believe I got to double check it. Oh, I think man. next week's the, the one year. Nice. The big one year anniversary. We're going to have to, you know, pull pull some shit out for that. Yeah. Yeah, we should go back to the original first episode together and see how it went. But yeah, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But uh what oh, are we no, going to say? I didn't even get to ask you what I was going to say. Uh, so, I remember a few months ago you were like, "Man, they're starting to uh, put less, uh, you know, uh, work into Sue's entrance. I believe maybe they got rid of the smoke machine or the, the flashing lights or something at some point. Have they satisfied you now? It's 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 good again. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're not a hundred percent yet. We're not a hundred percent yet. Was there an we, initial we're... first entrance that was like different? Like explain, Trent. That, you know, I, I need to know this. Well, first, you know, they used to always dim the lights. They had more smoke. They had more red lights going on. They even, I mean, they had the, the bride. At, at one time, the brides were on every entrance. That was like, oh, shit, that's cool, you know. I mean, now the brides are, the brides haven't been there in a while. And I get it. There's there's a cost involved in all that. But 
Um, but that added so much to her character, man. You know, having the undead, the bridesmaids was cool. So things like that. But right now, I know it's a different direction. But I just want to see more, more lights, more effect on her entrance because she's good at playing it up when she comes out. But we're 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 there. We're almost there. I mean, it's not bad. It's I like it. It's, I, I'm I'm happy with it right now. So I'm, oh, yeah. I'm my sa- my craving is satisfied. Is that okay with you, Kyle? She's very much <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> she, I was, she's go ahead. she's very much like Rosemary where, where she keeps it in character like all the time like nonstop. you look at her facial expressions and everything she's twitching she's she's yeah. big crazy googly eye looks and oh my god I mean Sue Young I, I, abs- I think she's still one of my favorite knockouts yeah, I mean her her character is tremendous, and still one of the most terrifying wrestlers in professional wrestling today, in my opinion. I'm not, I don't sit there and get like like goosebumps or nothing, but just how much she still puts into it every single entrance. It's not like she did it for a long time and she slacked mm-hmm. off and she's not as scary anymore. No, she she does different shtick every time. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and and also on social media, right? Those two, Rosemary and Sue, they don't break character, man. They are in character all the time. So I, I appreciate that from, from the two of them. That thing is pretty cool. But uh, guys, we get this tag match here. This was uh, it was a lot of back and forth. Pretty good match. Pretty uh, pretty s- standard tag match. But they um, they they went they went to a double count out, which is you know it's chaotic, basically. But then there was a little brawling afterwards. Rosemary pulled out thumbtacks at one point. They were going to suplex her. Havoc breaks it up. Sue hits Havoc by accident. I mean, it's it's chaos, right? Because the, the match, the Monsters Ball match, the knockouts one, is all four of them versus each other. So despite right. this alliance, right, they're still got to fight each other. So they teased you here, having Sue and Havoc kind of get into it until um, Father James Mitchell comes down, breaks it up, and keeps uh, – keeps the peace a little bit. So I, uh, I gotta say again, guys, I'm a big fan of Jim Mitchell. I think he is, he is aces to me. I think he's one of the most talented guys on television right now. And I think he's really the one making this, this feud even 10 times better than it is. What do you think? Oh, he, he, he just, he's gold. He just adds to the, the whole different dimension that managerial role that's lacking in professional wrestling today. And he's, you know, he, when he comes back, he can do no wrong, in my opinion. Agreed. Agreed. I think he's... Uh, it's always welcome. Always. Always. So we'll see, man. This The knockouts, um, uh, Monster Balls, is set to be a lot of fun. I think I have a feeling we'll see a title retention. I'm, I'm, I am I'm, don't want to get into predictions right now. We'll get to that maybe next week. But I think uh, they've set it up in a way that, like, we kind of don't know where... They can go in either direction. All four can walk out with the belt, and it, you'd have story built in. So that's a cool thing. That's a very cool thing. All right, guys, we're we're, we're building up to something cool here. As you know, the, there's there's a segment on this show that we're getting to in a second. Just just so you know, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Okay. But uh, we go to the back. Ace Austin is back there with Melissa Santos, and he's saying that the only reason that he lost to TJP was because it was a surprise. He wasn't prepared. He didn't have a chance to prepare for TJP. He doesn't even actually work there. And J-Bone, just like we talked about last week, uh, they got a rematch. TJP comes in, offers a rematch, and says, okay, now you can get ready. You have a week to get ready. It's exactly what we talked about, that that we were all hoping that there would not just be – Right, that there would be more than one match on this. And now part of me is hoping that they have it at Slammiversary now, open the show with, with this match maybe. I am. I'd be totally cool with it, but I think uh, let's start with Kyle on this one real quick. Kyle, are you a TJP guy? Were you? Did you like TJP as manic or anything, or even TJP? I think that uh, he's a great wrestler. Uh, I wasn't really too big on him during the uh, the manic phase. And uh, by the way, does anybody remember that he shortly, very shortly, took his mask off during Destination America, and then like. Put it back on weeks later. Does anybody yeah. else remember that? It's very I do. So weird. So weird. Cause they did a whole like documentary for him about like a little mini documentary about like him getting his contract. He was talking about how he was homeless and he's like, I signed my contract. I was able to buy a house and 
things like this. And, you know, I was, I mean, he was like with Dixie and everything. So like, dude, he, uh, I mean, they did, they did show his face. I mean, they, and then they, yeah, you're right. They went back to the mask. I was like, what the, like, what, where, like, what was all that? And then he was with, um, he was with, uh, he was with a, James Storm. Revolution. I wasn't too revolution. big on the revolution and me, like I'm a huge, you know, impact fan. And very rarely do I not enjoy something from the company, but I, I gotta say, I was not, I was not into the revolution storyline. No, it was, terrible. it was such an odd group, odd terrible. group. J Bone, you remember that group? No, I like I said, that must have been during a period of time when I wasn't, uh, you know, a little back and forth and watching. Uh, it. You mean to tell me, J Bone, <laughs> that you didn't watch James Storm push Mickey James onto train tracks off of weird uh, security cam footage? You missed that? He no, Mickey then James. I remember. I just don't remember <laughs> the. Yeah, really. Wait, what is she doing on Raw? <laughs> now, now, as much as I hated the, um, the Revolution, I got to say that I really did enjoy the. Uh, uh, that was what's called Nick Aldis, uh, Magnus, Magnus versus James Storm, and that very strange storyline. It was weird, but, but like, yeah. good weird. It was intriguing. Oh, that's right, because they're married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's coming yeah, back yeah, to yeah. me James now. Storm, like, stalked her at the supermarket and stuff. That's some good stuff. Hey, Impact Plus app, go back and find some of that. Yeah, that's there right. You there you go. There's footage. your plug. There's your plug, by everybody. But so, all right. So, TJ, so we got this match next week. I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. I I think Ace Austin needs that win back. I think he's got a little chance to get some win back. So I'm 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 fired up on it. I saw a lot of people Did online you, uh... very upset that uh, that Ace Austin lost that match. I mean, me too. Uh, yeah, you were one of them. You were one of them, Trent. Uh, but it's like uh, they were they're building a feud. You know, it's I know it's gonna be good. Yeah. I mean, I'm 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 in it enough to know that there's that there's definitely more to it. But I. I, you know, at first, before we knew there was more coming out of it, you know, we were kind of yeah. like, well, where are we going with all this, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. What did you feel like, oh, you're just going to feed him to TJP like that? The new guy, yeah. Ace Austin, you got to gotta put stock in him. But I am a fan of Ace Austin and uh, a very big fan of TJP. I think uh, TJP is very underrated. I think he's a hell of a cruiserweight style slash technical worker. Uh you know, as weird as it sounds, he did so much stuff in uh, Impact, and it was pretty good. But uh, when I saw him in person for Evolve, and I saw him uh, do some stuff for Evolve, uh, it just mm-hmm. totally, uh, I was like, wow, wait, this guy, it, it just totally uh, refreshed me on the character. And uh, that he's, it's not masked manic anymore, it's that TJP. So that yeah. TJP, uh, he's been around, he went to the, the uh, big old WWE, he's... Uh, Made his way around. He's got a little more experience under his belt. Uh, you know, I, I think he's uh, going to have a great run if he sticks around. If he signs a deal and sticks around, I think uh, TJP could be a, a big deal moving forward. And I mean, just the fact that you know he was in WWE for a while. Let's you know not uh, shy away from it. It uh, you know he increased his stock. He's got a little more a uh, little more power to you know move needles and whatnot. Yeah. Absolutely. Did man. you guys notice? Did you guys uh, notice what he said about his uh, former employer? Locked yes. in the basement for three years. Locked in the basement. It was great. Yeah, I was oh. like, oh shit. <laughs> Kyle, if you can, that I would like that clip uh, played. Can you play that clip real quick. Yes, yes, right here. Ace, Ace Austin, TJ, TJP. It's nice to meet you. Hi. Um. I'm terribly sorry about barging in on your message. I know you had something really important to say, but I just felt like I had to stretch my legs a little bit because I've been chained up in a basement for the last three years. You know what I'm talking about. Which, by the way, I'd like to say, uh, you know, what's the big deal about being in a basement, right? I took offense to that. Yeah, really. I, I, le- I lived in, in my... I lived out. I was I was living in my parents' basement when I was a kid, man. I, I moved to the basement. Yeah, I, I live in my parents. I mean, roommates. I live in my roommate's basement. What's what's the big deal? Yeah, what's the big deal? Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. I just I just doubt he called uh, Vinnie Mac uh, daddy. You know. <laughs> I mean, listen, I think I think every wrestling uh, every wrestling kid remark at some point lived in their parents' basement, right? No, no, they're <laughs> my that... roommates. They're not my parents. They're my roommates. <laughs> Hey, listen, my uh, my my old room that was in the basement of my parents' house is now basically one big ass storage closet because my mom's got a ton of shit in there. I, like they 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 couldn't wait to get me out of there. Like it's that's all it is now. It's a, it's like a, just a ton of shit. All my stuff's gone, boxed up, <laughs> rubber mates. But uh, <laughs> but 
But uh, anyway, right, guys, back. We're back on track here. We're losing. We're talking about basements. I don't know. Oh, yeah. TJP, basement. <laughs> <laughs> don't be surprised. So what we do. Off the rails. The tangents. Off the rails. We're like, we're like riding the crazy train over here, man. Off the rails. God damn it. All right. Well, speaking of off the rails, the Deaners are at the bar getting hammered. Getting hammered because they lost. And they're pissed off. They're getting, they're, drinking they're getting, that southern moonshine. That's well, we don't know what it is. I'm guessing it's a Molson, though. They're Canadian. Well, you know, at least Cody's Canadian. Like, I'm going to guess it's Molson. Or even something, some shittier beer. Like no, 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 no. Molson is what the North would be drinking. These guys are rednecks. They're, they're trailer trash. They're drinking moonshine. It's got to be moonshine. Uh, I think it's moonshine out of, out of a beer bottle. I, I, I'll ask Jake. I'm going to talk to Jake. It's like, Jake, what beer are you drinking? <laughs> I'm going to ask him. I'm going to see Jake in two weeks, and I'm going to talk to him and ask him. I'm going to say, what two the weeks. hell are you drinking? Probably some good old Budweiser's, you know, some good old Buds. <laughs> Actually, it was, a, it, was, it, was a, it was a light beer. Oh, shit. Maybe some of that, <laughs> some of that cheap off-brand shit that I've seen nah. J-Bone drink in old videos. J-Bone, what, what is that brand that you drink? Not, not to put your ass on the line, but what, what was it? it, it oh, it, it, was was a comb- it was a combination of, uh, it was Milwaukee's Best or Ham's. Ham's. Uh, Hams. Classic, classic Milwaukee brand, right? Piss Hams? in a can. Milwaukee's oh, yeah. piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, listen, actually, I come to think of it, Jake's a big boy, man. He probably drinks some of that, that really potent craft beer, you know, that really heavy stuff. Some good stuff. Man. He's a classy guy. He's um, a big boy. Big boy. He's a big boy. But, um, uh, all right, guys, so they're in there getting hammered. They see Hit Squad comes in. Now, uh, wait, side note, side goddamn note here. Why is it, guys? Because I know, listen, I, I'm, I'm convinced. I know Josh Matthews listens. I know. Josh, I know you listen because there's things we've said that you have referenced on TV and things have happened. And I'm convinced you're listening. I know you are. I'm, I'm going on a limb here, boys. And I'm putting out Josh Matthews might either love us or hate us after the statement. But I know he's listening because sometimes I have pointed out that he was pronouncing Daisy wrong. And then he started saying it right. But to this week, he jumped right back into saying it wrong. Went back to the whole Desi pronunciation. What are we doing? I said, oh. I told Josh, I said, it's they see, like saying they see, like, oh, they see something. And they apparently, see, Trent, uh, BQ <laughs> isn't listening to us enough because he no. did the Rohit interview and he said Desi the entire interview. I know. I got Killed so me. pissed. Oh. I was like, boss, oh. what are you doing here? What are you doing? You, we, we're oh. on the network. We're on the lounge here. The loungers even know how. I think as a result of our show, Kyle, we have educated the loungers, yeah, people who didn't know what a Daisy was. Yeah. Get it together, <laughs> party people. Get it together. Yeah, that's right, party yeah, people. I'm, What's I'm, going on? I'm an old fart. I'm an old fart. Forty-five year old wrestling fan. I, you, I'm even learning. Yeah, see, J Bone's even learning. And, and, and Jim, I can <laughs> assume where you live in Wisconsin, there's not too many Daisies walking around. There's not too many people with my skin tone walking around in your neighborhood. So I'm going to safe to assume that hey, if J Bone's learning this, you can all learn this. And Josh Matthews, damn it. They see. Now watch, guys. You watch. Next uh, it's, it's, it's pale. It's Dude, it's, I, I got to be honest. It's an MJF's ass around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. We uh, The They See Hit Squad shows up and starts antagonizing the de- Deaners and calling them losers. The, at one point, Rohit calls them Bo and Luke. He's like, God damn, Bo and Luke. You got to lost that match. Dude, it was great. I'm uh, telling you, he's fire on the microphone. Give this man a live mic. But uh, pissed off the Deaners. That feud continues. I love it. I love that feud. That is a great. That is one of my favorite feuds going on right now. And it's and it's like a middle middle of the card feud, but it's it's a fun feud. I I enjoy it. I like all those guys. Oh, you're not oh, even doing that. I love Gamma. I love Gamma and his heart attacks. I do. His, his <laughs> I also love like his. Uh, did you Kyle? Did you catch his? Oh, you're not even doing when, that. Like, uh, <laughs> When uh when the, the two boys were like antagonizing the Deaners, like Raj was like making fun of him, and uh, Gomez is kind of snickering and doing that like henchman laugh, like <laughs> what a bunch of losers. He's great. He's, great. he's he's such an animated character, like the great Gama Singh. We, we you know I gotta say Impact Wrestling, they're the managers. We got Sinister Minister. We got Gama Singh. I mean you know they're doing it right with the managers. It's like that. It feels very eighties, but it's like. It's uh, with it. a modern twist, you know. We need a little more old school sprinkled in like that. So, as far as you know, managers go in pro wrestling, impact. Yeah, let's give let's give it a, a Howard Stern, Russo like clap. R- round of applause. <laughs> but, you know, uh, let me get the whole audience in on it. There you go. Good. 
Thank you. Oh, what a lovely audience. What a lovely audience. Listen, I want a little trivia for you guys. When Raj walks up and he says to Rohit, he goes, look at these Gande Gore here. You know, he said something in India. Look at these Gande Gore. You, know, you guys want to know what that translates to? It means, Ooh, look, what is it? It means, look at these dirty white boys. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of, <laughs> Bunch of that, honky crackers. That's basically what it is. It's a way of saying, look at these, <laughs> look at these dirty, look at these dirty scum, scummy rednecks is what a basic <laughs> way to say that. It's dirty white boys. Uh, boys, we are, we're coming to the, to the heat here. We're coming to the meat. Uh, one of the, one of the big, big heavy moments of the show here. We're in a church. Eddie Edwards is in the church and he's in the church and he's, uh, he's about to confess. The Padre comes up to him, puts his hand on his shoulder, which J bone turned out to be the priest. It wasn't, it wasn't Raven. Was the priest whose hand yeah. it was, yeah. but uh, puts his hand and says, "You know, how long since your last confession?" Eddie starts spilling his guts. You know, I mean, Eddie is is breaking down. He's he's on that path again. First, Sammy Callahan drove him to this now Killer Cross. Eddie Edwards is is losing his mind. The hand at one point, it's still there, but then the camera pans and it's Killer Cross. Killer Cross's hand is there, and they have a face off. So he basically. Uh, they had their face off, and then at one point it ended where Eddie left and Cross stayed, and the priest came back and said, "What about your confession?" And he's, I, I of, this is a <laughs> clip. I, I need you to play this clip real, real quick about what Cross said to the priest, please. How long has it been since your last confession, my son? I confess my sins every day. What do you mean by that, Father? I would like to confess my sins to you. Just a question. How much time do you have? <laughs> and would you hear that? Look at that. He basically says, uh, you know, his sins are, he confesses every day. And he's going to hang around in the church for a while. Oh, I no. love it. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm surprised the goddamn church didn't burn down. But, uh, dude. Oh, what a yeah, that's story. what I was waiting for. Smoke. <laughs> my only gripe, we, we we all talked about this off air. My only gripe is that Cross had nothing to, for continuity's sake, to sell the blood and the violence from the week prior. I mean, from what it looked like he got bit in the face, I was hoping for a band aid. That's all. I, I I'm a big continuity guy. I like continuity, guys. J Bone, am I wrong for expecting that? I think that was that should have been something. I think it was internal because he spit out like a cup worth of blood. So I think when Eddie was like, you know, reeling him in there and this camera angle was kind of mm. off and he was on top of cross, I think he was just, you know, knocking a couple of teeth loose. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's what I got from it. Okay. I know. I, and I, I didn't, at one point he it, was, it was hard to, that yeah. kind of, I, I was, yeah, that was when there was like, when cross was screaming, even last week, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, they pan away to the wife, uh, Alicia. She's walking, you know, walking backwards, hands over her mouth. She's in shock. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly what Eddie's doing, but whatever he was doing to Cross, Cross was just dying. Uh, he recovered well. You I, know, I, I'm, I'm, I, think I try not to overthink some, stuff uh, like this. Some rough French kissing going on there, you know. <laughs> you know, you know when your girl bites your bottom lip, you know. And he's a psycho. I wouldn't put it past him. I, I, you know, I wouldn't put it past him. And not that there would be anything wrong with two guys making out on TV. It's 2019. It's perfectly acceptable. But you know, Eddie's a psycho, man. I, I think he went for the lips. You're killing me. He's spitting out the gu- thought, he's spitting out the blood, you know. I thought that when they when they cut back down like he was biting the side of his face because he got up and he had the bloody mouth too so I, I thought that's that's what they were implying am i wrong i don't know maybe we should watch that again we should review that again i could have sworn that they uh that they were referencing that he was biting the side of his face maybe i'm wrong though because i mean impacts they're good about continuity they're especially new regime is very tight on that script uh, i would imagine if they he was biting his face that cross would have had a bandage if we if it is what we thought it was so Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Guys, I'll take the L on that if I'm wrong. Let's say that. <laughs> All right. This is this this next segment. I'm gonna I'm gonna I want I want Kyle to talk about this one because this is something. Kyle, I, when I see Johnny Bravo, I think about you. I don't know why. I don't know why. 
I just look at I look at Johnny Bravo. I think of Kyle. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> I feel he's kind of kind of a scumbag, but he's like you know, people respect him, but at the same time, they're like what a scumbag. What a scumbag. I'm a lovable scumbag. There's nothing lovable about that guy. That slithering snake. Johnny Johnny uh, Impact loves him. Ah, uh, maybe not. That's that's debatable too. Actually, who knows? But uh, Kyle. Your boy Johnny Bravo. I think I'm gonna call him Uncle Johnny. He's your uh, John E. The E is for erotic. Let's not forget that. You guys recall that from a couple of weeks ago? He says the E is for erotic. <laughs> That's the thing. I can I can imagine you saying that, Kyle. Like if your what if your middle initial was E, I imagine you're like yeah the E. Well, well, my, my last name starts with an E, so I could be Kyle Erotic. Kyle, Kyle Erotic. erotic. Yeah, there erotic. you go. Let's go with that for your gimmick. Kyle Erotic. Like, you know, can you guys imagine opening the show? I'm going, welcome back to All On Stop Impact. Back with Trent J. Moan and Kyle Erotic. He is, he traveled a long, hard way to get here, folks. Tonight, okay, let's that. looking great tonight. Ooh, that's <laughs> <laughs> Keep it erotic, so, baby. He is keeping it erotic. So Johnny's back there. John E. is back there bragging about attacking Rich Swan with the X. You know, he stabbed him. He's like, he actually, Johnny Bravo guys used a term, which is a very Midwest term. I don't know if you guys caught it. J-Bone, you might know this, but I'm a city kid, and I know this because we use it all the time growing up in the city. But he said, I shanked I shanked Rich Swan with the, with the X. He shanked him because he poked him, you know, like a, like a knife, like a, like a prison shank. We, we use shank all the time growing up in Chicago. But uh, he's oh, like, that's, I sh- that's like a that's like a prison thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. But like, we, we use it a lot in Chicago. We use shank for a lot, like not just like knifing a guy. We use it for like just like if you if you I don't know if you do a lot of, a lot of things can be referred to as shanking. You know, <laughs> like we've used it a lot. You, you shank the guy. Like, I, should, I don't know. I, I I hear I hear it a lot on holidays. Like you know, shank you very much. Shank. Okay, well that's that's enough. Yeah, well, you know, when you're when you're in prison <laughs> and you gotta stab somebody, you know, you take your toothbrush or whatever it may be, you know, sharpen it up, and you shank him. Shank him. Shank. Anyway, so he's talking about Shank and Rich Swan, and he's bragging about it. The other refs start laughing at him, and he's talking about how Johnny and him are soulmates. <laughs> John, do you guys catch this? <laughs> He's like, Johnny and I are soulmates. We complete each other. <laughs> like, I, dude, I, I was tripping when he's like, we complete each other. And all the refs are like, what? <laughs> so they're all laughing at him. And uh, Swan shows up. And he's about to teach Bravo a lesson until uh, Johnny Impact arrives, breaks it all up. They're brawling. Big separation. Brouhaha. Willie's there. Uh, and then Johnny, in a moment of anger, it accepts a match on their behalf. Tag match. Johnny Bravo and Johnny Johnny Impact taking on Swan and and, and Willie Mack. This is kind of cool because Johnny Bravo used to be a wrestler, guys. I'm putting that out there. But uh, hilarious. I think it's great. What do you guys think? Jay Bone, let me start with you on that. Um, I, I, I thought it was hilarious. The whole segment was great. And I... I can't wait to see Johnny Bravo get in the ring. I mean, it's yeah, that's going to be very interesting. I've, I've never seen him wrestle. I've only ever seen him as a ref, and now as well, this you know, this this scumbag sidekick to uh, uh, you know Johnny Impact and his crew. So, so uh, yeah, this I can't wait to see this. I mean, is, is, is he going to just you know show up in the suit and the and the shiny shirt and the crazy pants and you know get in the ring like that, or is he going to? have some kind of crazy like unitard on i I can't wait to see what he does listen he was a he was a wrestler he knows how to work no question about it but he's he's a he's a character of a guy man bravo's funny i'm i'm looking forward to seeing bravo what he does here this this should be a fun thing it sells itself on paper it truly does i mean johnny bravo one of the uh the pillars of scum town. Yeah, you got Ty of Valkyrie, Queen Scum, uh, almost scumbag of the week every week here on the show. You got Johnny Scumbag and Johnny Bravo, the, the scumbag lackey bag carrier guy. You know, yeah, I, I want to see him in the ring. It's it's like I, it's for some reason I just I always think back to uh, Bill Alfonso versus Beulah McGillicuddy. Like you know, it's just that sort of character going into the ring and having a match. You know what I mean? It's gonna be fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I agree. I think it's going to be just along those lines. I mean, Johnny Bravo's like our Bill Alfonso. He is. He's like, the, he's like our modern-day Bill Alfonso. But he's erotic. He's erotic, though. He's extremely <laughs> erotic. 
<laughs> yeah, he doesn't need a whistle, man. He he's erotic. He's walking around ready, strapped naturally. I wish he could like carry the boing sound with him and just use it whenever <laughs> he's talking. You know, I you know I should do. I should join Impact and carry around my soundboard and just follow people around throughout the broadcast. You know, sit next just, to Josh and Don and you know just play my bites, go around backstage, yeah, follow Moose bad. around within my ass. In my ass. In my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one, Kyle, that the in my ass has never gotten old since the Disney yeah, debut. It, it, we like to ask it every few months. So right now, Impact Tribe loungers in the comments, what is your favorite soundbite that you've heard? It could be one of the regulars. It could be one of the rare ones. You know, I'm such a whack job. Every episode, you know, you, you have the regulars. And then I, every episode, Trent, if you notice, the, you'll get some – that are like exclusive to that episode. You might not hear them again. So the intros, man, you ever notice on our show, every intro is different. Like it's always a little different. You know what I mean? Like I, I take pride in my insanity. I do. Yeah. That's no, just one of the best parts of the show. Yeah. I mean, Kyle, your, your insanity, your scumbagness, your clips, your sound bites. I mean, it, it is, it has made the show, but it's also more importantly, Kyle made you who you are today. <laughs> If I didn't have that to offer, Trent would have thrown me out of here a long, long time ago. But it's like, oh. I, it's like I can't get rid of Kyle. Uh, what would we do? The show would be was, so naked. That was close. Those early, those early, <laughs> that early month, that early, first first month was was well, was lean. It was tough times on us, Kyle. May you know, almost t- broke you, Trent. May last year? No, I'm talking July last year oh. almost broke us. Oh, oh, you're talking back. Oh, even, even I'm further, talking even further back. No, nah, listen. I, you know, May of this year, I was already settled in. I knew what I was doing. I'm, 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 I'm potting on my own. I, I, I had my thing going on by well, then. I threw you to the wolves, Trent. It's like when you want to teach your kids how to swim. How do you do it? You throw them in the pool. You throw them in the ocean. You just take your kids. You throw them in the water. That's how you teach them to swim. You got to throw people to the wolves. What a scumbag! Yeah. That's uh, that's that's what you did to me. You left me hanging. And I go, and look at you now. Know. Look at you now. He, oh, I'm a he, even, even the Backstage man. Boys podcast is listenable nowadays. You know, you really shine. You become a great podcaster. I appreciate it, Kyle. I owe it all to you. You're you're a good man. You're a good man. Yeah, I, I threw you in the water and tried to drown you. I'm a good man. Yeah, you're a hell, hell of a friend. Oh, He's a friend. good scumbag. Remind me to call you on my deathbed and see see if you can maybe be the one to pull the plug. Great, all right, great friend. On. I bought Bound for Glory tickets and uh, put myself in a different section than you. Great friend. Yeah, great, great friend. guy. I lost it with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, Kyle, if, if, I, if I PayPal you the money, why don't I just buy my tickets with you and we can all sit together? He's like, I get no response. He, he texts J Boy. Texts me the next day. He's like, "Oh, sorry, man. I already got my tickets." Well, well, hold on a second. You gotta understand. Bro. You have to understand. A, I'm not a general admission kind of guy. Even if I am general admission, I still scumbag my way into those seats. We found that out a few weeks ago. But you have to understand, Trent. The Kyle man goes off of the minimum wage paycheck, and I'm the guy that doesn't put any money aside. I get my paycheck on Friday. I'm completely broke by Thursday. There is no money to lay out. You have to understand, Trent. It, 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 it's not so much scumbaggery, but there's poverty involved as well. So if I had the money, and it's not just you, I got to buy one for the nurse too. There's yeah. a lot of tickets. Trent. I was I was gonna pay you, but you're like, nah, dude. PayPal's not gonna clear in enough time, so I can't get your ticket. I was Amen. like, what the hell? <laughs> but uh, scum's gonna scum. We made that yeah, scum to scum, man. You you left me hanging, dude. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. That was terrible. Uh, I was gonna say something, but I totally forgot. And wait a minute, you bastard! You were late to the show anyway. What the hell difference did it make? You oh got no! There, like, you, you, mean, you mean how I broke my cell phone that night and had no cell phone until I got there? You know, it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah, guys, I get a I get a, I get a snap. <laughs> I got a Snapchat from Kyle going like, like the the shirt for tonight. And it was the wolf shirt, I think, right? You wore the wolf shirt. Yeah. It was like wolf shirt tonight, you know. And he had a hat on. He was, he was ready to go. Kyle's fired up. And I'm like, oh, cool. He's almost here. I get to you know finally meet my my boy, dude. I'm you know first time meeting him in person. It's great. You know, I'm looking over. I'm like, where where are you at? No answer. No response. Texting, texting, texting. Nothing. 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 Phone calls are going right to voicemail. Right That's to when voicemail. you know there's a problem. And, I, and then I then I I see him shuffling in during that tag match. Well, that, you that, smelt that skunky smell fill up the wow. entire arena. You know, like, oh no, I smell pot. <laughs> Kyle must I'm be here. Just, 
no smoking building. Oh, but Kyle's here. Look who's here. You know, <laughs> like, look who wanders in casually as if there's not a pay-per-view happening, rolls into a seat. And I just go, I just go, hey, Kyle. And he's looking around. Hey, Kyle. He's looking at his seat. I go, fuck you, asshole. Yeah, f- fuck you, Kyle. <laughs> what got my attention. I didn't hear him until he said, fuck you. That, that's how you get my attention. Wait, hold on. Ah, uh, good times. I wish we had a sound by that. Well, you know what, Trent? I sat next to New York Giant NFL players, all right? I sat, right. With, my, I sat with my real friends, football right. players. Yeah. You're a baller, dude. You're a G. Right. Nice. You're a total G, Kyle. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? Speaking of Gs. Look at this. We got Sammy Callahan with Madman Fulton taking on Falaba with Scarlett Bordeaux. Uh, guys, I got to say, this is this. is I'm, I'm going to say it now. Match This match stole the show from me. I can't believe how damn good Falaba is in, in the ring now. He's lost 100 pounds, they said. 100? Yeah, you, can, you can tell. Oh, yeah. my God. He stole the show. I was so impressed with him. Sammy, to me, is the best. Sammy is my number one. I think in the business today, Sammy Callahan is number one. So Sammy touching – Sammy could, you know, take a shit, and it will be a five-star match for Meltzer at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's – to me, he's tops. <laughs> but uh, but I think Fala did an amazing job. I'm, what you got? J-Bone, give me your analysis on this one, man. I think he looked fantastic. He did. I mean, this is this – is- this is another example of Falaba docking it out of the park as a singles competitor. Did you notice what Don Callis said early on in the match when he was all fired up? Yeah. He goes, what he, he, go, he goes, uh, all you got to do is, is flick that, sw- that flick that certain switch and you're going to see a total different Falaba. And that's something I said a few weeks ago. And I'm like, I would love to see a full blown heel fall apart, just like just a badass Samoan, just you know, kind of like Fatu, only yeah. different, you know. <clears throat> he could do it, man. He could do it. I think he's the he's the guy. I mean, because dude, he can he can go, man. Like I can't get over his cardio. The dude is never yeah. blown up. He's rolling around, taking like what the fuck? I'm like shit. He's <laughs> rolling around. It's unbelievable. He's flying around the ring like a damn loot. It's crazy. Yeah. Wow. He's getting so good, man. I love him. I love him. If, if I, you know, when I get the money and I start buying Impact t-shirts, th- his shirt is going to be one of the first ones I buy. That's at the top awesome. of my list. That's awesome. That's awesome. Kyle, you are, you are follow. I don't Kyle, you saw Fala back in the, in the, in the syndicate days, yeah, right? I, I talk about that uh, probably yeah. uh, once every other month here on the show while discussing Fala Bahi. I like to remind the people, I saw Fala on the indies in a, this heel character, very similar to like a Yoko Zuna, and uh, really? it, it was fantastic. Really? Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, there was I, I've told the story before, but you know, in case you're new to the show, I'll tell it again and uh, to, to let you know, J-Bone. Uh, so one night I went out with my buddies, and a bunch of drinks at the bar, you know, a, a real late one. I came home at about, stumbled in 4.30 in the morning. And at 5 a.m., I found this show on the public access channel called PWS. It's not on anymore. It was uh, a New Jersey-based uh, indie fed. And uh, it was cool, man. They did like, uh, are you Trent, are you, Trent, are you familiar with the Pulp Fiction-style promos ECW used to run? Oh, yeah. Dude, they, I grew up on ECW, okay, man. Okay, so they would have those playing throughout the show. And uh, it, it was just this really cool underground show. In between commercial breaks, they'd have, like, old wrestling facts, like, uh, you know, like, gotch, like, references, like, all sorts of stuff, man. And uh, Falaba played more of this quiet, silent, uh, you know, Yokozuna-type character. He had uh, this evil manager with him, and uh, I thought he was really great. And I went and bought a ticket and went out to New Jersey and caught uh, caught the show. And uh, it was Falaba versus Dan Math, and uh, I can't remember the third guy, but they put on a hell of a match. And just it was this completely oh. different Falaba to the Falaba that we know and love, you know, the more lovable Falaba in Impact Wrestling. But I never forgot that. And I always thought in the back of my head during this Impact run, I would like to see him transition into that character. But people really love Falaba. Like he's such, he's so over as a baby face. I don't know. I don't know if they could pull that off. 
I really don't. But I, I would rather see him be pushed more as a babyface in that sense because he deserves it. He deserves the TV time. Followed by one of my most favorite episodes in the modern era, Trent, was followed by versus Austin Aries when they had oh, the whole roster. Yeah. Well, the whole roster yeah. came out for yeah, it, around the ring. That was one of the best episodes of the modern Impact era. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, that was his coming of age match. That was the match I think that turned the tide for him. I think because people were like, wow, this this guy just isn't a comedy guy. He can go. Oh, yeah. And you're right. I agree with you, Kyle. That was one of my favorites, if, too, of the modern time. management doesn't see him as a star, they're smoking crack. They have to be. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. I think I think that he is he is definitely great potential, but he showed it, man. He showed it right there. So good match with Sammy. Sammy wins. Uh, I believe he hit the cactus special to take that win. So again, I, yeah. I think I said this before when he fought Fala, like because of Fala's size, Sammy hits it in such an intelligent way via the ropes. He has Fala kind of across the you know coming in from the outs on the apron to the. Um, to the inside, and he pile drives him via the ropes, and it's great. It's a smart move. It's like, hey, can't lift the guy, but I'm going to do it this way. He did a great job. So, great move it's for Stuck. Da- it's those damn bare feet. Gets them every time. Every time, man. Every time. Poor guy. <laughs> Poor guy. But after that, Sammy does a little bit of a sit-in, calls out Tessa. You know, he's oh. called. This was great. Now, this got me so hyped oh, for the match. Oh, man. This he calls out Tessa. He's sitting in, not taking any shit. And Tessa comes out, confronts him, and he has that face off with her. And then he kicks her in the face. And I was like, whoa, shit. And then the rest of OVE come out. They had, I think Fulton had a bat. You know, they're about to they're about to take her out, man. And um oh, and it was that was ugly. It was ugly, but he he pile drives her. I mean he 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 really went Sammy went hard on this one, man. Took out yeah. Tesla. So this w- this is going to be a fantastic goddamn match at Slamverse. I I think it's going to it's it's going to be poised to steal the show. Uh, now yeah, here's the thing. That's exactly what I'm saying. Here's the thing I want to ask you guys. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We'll talk about it maybe once Slamverse is done. Intergender wrestling. Are you guys fans? It's a big topic right now. What do you guys think? J Bo, where do you stand on it? I'm good with it if it's if it's not just thrown out there for shits and giggles. I feel like the way that that Impact is doing it, they've got a whole storyline wrapped around, you know, uh, you know, Tessa Blanchard. She's you know she's facing some uh, some some opponents, some opposition with the uh, you know the the male roster, and uh, you know it's it started kind of goofy with the whole. Uh, uh, disco and now it's getting uh, a lot more serious you know ramped ramped up really quick with the ove and different yep. members and um yeah and, and like i said if, if if you really dig deep and i know i've said this before but it's it's worth repeating just to remind the fans because i understand that this is not everyone's cup of tea i get sure. that but if you look at it from the bigger picture that hey remember tessa when she first came in and everybody hated Hated the shit out of her. Oh yeah. This is still part of that redemption story, in my opinion. It's like because everybody hated her so bad, and you got you, you can't just have a one off or this feud with Gail Kimmett. Oh, now she's a baby face. Now we love her. I'm sure there's plenty of fans out there that's that ah, screw that bitch. I still hate her. You know, you gotta you gotta prove it to the fans why you should love Tessa Blanchard. And I think I think this is a great right yep. way to do it especially with what ove did to her in this episode oh my god the the, the straight boot that sammy does he's just old and then the 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 shot to the gut with the baseball bat and then the pile driver oh my god and, and she's her her selling is just gold you know she's like completely out he kicks back puts her feet up on her gut like yep i did that what are you gonna do yeah, it's great. Sammy can get anything over him, telling you, man. He is just too good. He's too damn good. Oh, too yeah. damn good. So we'll see. I, I'm oh, yeah. excited about this one. Kyle, you you an intergender wrestling guy? I don't think I ever asked you that. Well, here's my take on all of this. Um, it has to be done right, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
like Tessa has been built up for this. Tessa is the above average. Uh, she's a machine. She's a total fucking machine. They, that, in my opinion, she's, she's, tough. she's the one that you do it with. I mean, it has to be the right type of, uh, you know, uh, female wrestler. It, you know, it has to be like her. If, if Havoc were in this position, it'd be believable to me. It has to be, you know, one of one of your bigger girls. And uh, I, I get it that people are funny about it. But, I mean, it fits to the narrative of today's society. I mean, female equality, girl power, all that, you know, it's very sure. relevant in, uh, you know, today's world. Uh, it's a good story to tell. Like, I, you know what, I caught that uh, after the AEW show, uh, Tony Khan did a press conference, and he mentioned that he didn't like Jordan Grace getting punched in the face by a guy at one of their previous shows. I really don't follow the company. I'm not sure what it was, but and he mm -hmm. said he, because it's domestic violence. I, how is that domestic violence? I, I mean, a professional wrestling oh. entertainment show is not a husband putting his hands on his wife. I, that guy fucking, that googly-eyed bastard with the fucking glasses. I, I, <laughs> I can't stand him. I can't. I don't even know him. You know, I, I can't stand him. All, all the power to AEW, but I, it bothered me that he, he called it domestic violence. Like, no, Jordan yeah. Grace is a tough fucking bitch that can wrestle men, and I'm with that. I A lot of people are funny about it, and I'm, I'm going to get chewed in the comments by the people that are going to say, oh, it's unrealistic, da da da, da. No, I, if the right female is booked in the storyline, a Jordan Grace, a Tessa, a Havoc, it works for me. And it also depends who they're going against. And I mean, Sammy Callahan is the perfect guy to put in that position because – He's tough when he has to be. He can play yeah. kind of a chicken shit almost when he has to be. He's like the perfect character to put in it. And I mean, can we just mention uh, seeing a woman get pile driven by a dude on TV is uh, pretty shocking. I mean, it used to happen all the time in like 1999. Almost every week that would happen. But nowadays, we haven't seen that in a long time. It shocked me. Seeing him kick her in the face and hit her with a pile driver, it, it yeah. gave me a shock that I haven't felt from a professional wrestling show. And I don't know if that's good or bad in quite some time. But, you know, to answer your question, Trent, simply, uh, yes, I am for the intergender wrestling. I think it's uh, in 2019, I think it works. I totally do. And you have to have the right people doing it. And Tessa is totally believable. And yes. it's not domestic violence. Uh, don't call it. No. It's, it's an He's athletic a lot of, competition. He's getting a lot of heat for that press conference you mentioned. He said a couple of funny things from what I understand. So, uh, Jabo, I'm sure you, you're probably aware of that, but, uh, but yeah, well, I heard I, part, I, Rick Moranis, yeah, it was, it was, it was a, it was a post, it was, it was a post fighter fest, uh, uh, media scrum and I didn't watch the whole thing. I, I there's, there's different ones were uploaded on YouTube. I, I saw most of them. I didn't catch all of his, I, I was watching watched about half of it but i think the reference to jordan grace is when last year at all in part of the battle royal she had a face off with brian cage right and yeah. they and they and i don't remember exactly the sequence of who hit and kicked and slammed and whatever who well she won right but uh no no she was she she got she got her stuff in though i mean she shined she shined Okay. Big time. So it was like it was soon after that that she signed with um uh or well dude, I'm not gonna go over that whole signing story shtick that yeah dude, to, oh no she's not signed I'm not talking about that stuff I just that she got the attention of Impact Wrestling they were at the show Scott Demore was there and probably was like boom signer signer oh yeah you nice. impressed her well. Listen, I think, like I said, Kyle, I think it's with the right players involved, it works. So, and in this case, yeah. the right players. So, cool. All right. Let's, uh, we got a couple more segments here. Let's, let's get to it real quick, guys. Move along. Well, I'm moving. I'm moving. God damn. I'm uh, not rushing. Yeah, I'm just saying, move along. We're, we've already got the people in here for an hour and 11 minutes, Trent. We can't keep them here all night. We're just, all right, they're not all rushing. Right. You. We'll I know you're not rushing. I thought you were German. All right. Anyway, listen. Oh. Let's, let's. <laughs> I'm a crowd, ah. damn it. A sauerkraut. You're a create, <laughs> definitely sour, that's for sure. A sauerkraut at that. Six man sour tag. scumbag. Sour scumbag. He's a he's a scumbag kraut. Can, can you say scumbag in like a German accent, J Bone? <laughs> yeah, that was a straight face. I, I'm das, trying to introduce German J Bone. 
That's scumbag. That's just a scumbag. A scumbag. Sc- I don't know. <laughs> yeah, stick with the Dusty Bone. Stick with Dusty get, Bone. Dusty Bone's good. We could say it in a, in a Russian. What are we doing a Russian one, Cal? You want like a Russian scumbag? Hello, Kyle. You're a very scum. You're a bag of scum. <laughs> now, excuse my ignorance here, Trent, because I, yeah. I really don't know your native tongue. Uh, what is scumbag in uh, Paki language? Call it that. I don't know what you speak, what, what your uh, native tongue is. I mean, I'm still teaching him. I'm still teaching the kid. All right. Uh, scumbag. In, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm trying to remember here. Let's I'm ignorant, see. Trent. I, I cut every class in school. I, I never went to social studies. What language do you speak in Pakistan? It, well, so so uh, in Pakistan is uh, the language is called Urdu. U R D U. Urdu. Urdu. And it, Urdu is a is a is a, is a kind of built off of Hindi, you know, which is you know that's why I can understand the Desi Hit Squad. I can understand what they say because it's the same language almost. It's kind of like. Uh, you know, British English to American English. It's kind of just trailed itself off a little bit. What is so, scumbag in Urdu? Can, can you translate you could that? Say, yeah, uh, if I had to remember, use the word, it'd be ganda. 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 Wow, what a ganda. Ganda. <laughs> or you really want to emphasize, you go, you go, sale ganda. Kyle the gunda. I like gunda. that. Kyle the Kyle gunda. Kyle the gunda, yeah. Gunda, man, you're a gun. You're yeah. just a, you're just dirty, man. You're a scumbag. Next time That's I right. get my white sauce halal, I'll, I'll tell them, you know, I, I, I'm a gunda. Give me my fucking food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just, just tell them. I'm just like, I'm gunda. That's I'm gunda. And they'll be like, what? <laughs> they'll be like, go wash, go wash up that you dirty bastard. All right, dirty let's, go. Let's, let's, move. <laughs> let's move on here. Let's move on. You're, you're going to say it to some. It's a Pakistani guy when you're going to get your your food, and he's he's gonna answer you back in English, like some like some like some scumbag from Queens, you know, like that's great and all, kid. What are you eating? You oh, want yeah. some goddamn kebabs or yeah, what? I, I'm I'm gonna get more than white sauce on that halal for sure. Yeah, you will. A different type of white sauce. <laughs> no question about it. No question. You know, I, by the way, I did a, did one of those DNA tests. You know, I did one of those DNA tests. I got done last year. Oh, Twenty five. The, the, the kid is yours, isn't it, Trent? 25% white. Go figure that. 25% European. Ah, Changed my whole life. Wow. Changed my whole life. A, a quarter cracker. Yeah. Trent, Trent's or, got some honky in him after all. Unbelievable. 22% British. 2%, 2% uh, Sicilian Italian. You fucking and one, peckerwood. And 1% goddamn German. One, unbelievable. I, I'm like, you're a dude, mutt, immediately. You're a, you're a mutt dog. Oh, it's unbelievable. I started shopping at the Gap immediately. Like the next day, for some reason, I was drawn to the Gap. Let's, uh, let's stop at the Old Navy, honey. Let me go check out some of their blue jeans and rugbies. I started wearing shoes with no socks. It was like my whole life changed. My whole life changed. Ex- extra mayonnaise on my sandwich, please. Oh, yeah. No, plain. Plain sound. No spice. Plain. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, that 25% of me changed my life. It's <laughs> the elitist. Super elitist just jumped out. It was nuts. Twenty five percent, unbelievable. <laughs> don't put any salt and pepper on that, sir. I don't like my food spicy. I don't, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Unreal, man. Unreal. But anyway, moving on here. Uh, how the hell did we go into that? Moving on. Uh, LAX Santana Ortiz with the Laredo Kid and Conan on the outside, taking on the Rascals, Dez, Wentz, and Trey. A little bit of a preview of Slammiversary for the tag team titles. This match, I t- my exact words were, shit, I blinked and I missed 78 moves. There was so much happening in this match. It was nuts. But what a big result. Uh, the Rascals beat LAX. Trey made the pin. I, forget, I, think, I think he pinned Ortiz. Uh, Trey with the pin. Yeah. And, then they, and then they went to the back, and then they're arguing about who's going to be the two to fight at, at Slammiversary against LAX. Was- Hilarious. Right. So they're in the smoke room, and, Trey, and Trey's basically like, well, I get to do it, right? And Wes like, Wentz is like, no, we're the team, me and Dez. And then Dez is like, what are you talking about? And he's like, wait a minute, but me and Trey have a finishing move. And Dez is like, we have a finishing move. He's like, no, we don't. Me and Trey do. So, like, it was all this thing. Hilarious segment in the back. Let's talk about the match for a second. J-Bone, what do you think of this match? I thought it was it, – it was – there was so much happening. It was so much fun to watch. So that – they're you know they're, they're beefing in the middle of the ring before the action even starts. Did you see the look? 
the Rascals faced. This is a different Rascals team. I was like, like they they came to like, all right, we're we're here, you know, you know, we haven't smoked in a week. We're we're uh we're here to you know we're here to win this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um. And then, you know, they're, they're practically nose to nose and Laredo kid dives over LAX and takes out all the rascals with a, with a, with a body press. I was like, Oh, what the hell? Oh, That's yeah. that hot start, man. Right off the bat. I was like in sane. Uh, Kyle, were you, I know you only went to one night of tapings, right? Were you, was this during the night you were there? No, this was uh taped on Friday night, I believe. Everything oh, okay. I saw is done from now, from here on out. It's uh, Friday night okay. stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. I want. I was, I was curious how this uh, how this came off live because it looked like the crowd was losing their mind on this one. Um, uh, it looked like a lot of fun, ton oh, of fun yeah. to watch. But these, I mean, but these guys are all aces, man. They're all these guys are, are never disappointing. They're always nailing it every time out of the gate. I can't imagine them ever having a bad match. But let me ask you guys this. Who do you want to be the two at Slammiversary? I'd like it to be the original two. What do you guys think? j Bone. Oh, God, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, I'd say the original two. I feel like uh, Trey is a great part of the group, but we've seen him as a solo guy so much. I think they should stick with that. And I really like what um, Wentz and Des do to together yeah. i'm like you know gonna put in the, the nicknames <laughs> but yeah oh and, and <laughs> uh wentz is you know getting sassy in the smoke i know this is after the match but man when he got like sassy at the end of that and he was doing the hair flips <laughs> oh yeah he was getting sassy <laughs> oh my god what a what a ride he's like i'm out of here i can't no stop i'm out of here <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. who who is your favorite rascal? If you had to pick one, Kyle, I'm gonna come to you next on that that question. Oh, favorite man. rascal? That is tough. I mean, the whole intro to these guys was this last year with with uh, Dez mm. on um, on the the X division, and uh, he even won that that X Cup tournament. Yeah, and uh, I. I got to say him, you know, but I mean, it's, it's really close because I know a lot, a lot of people reference uh, Trey to just a smaller ricochet and, and Wentz has got that whole punk rock feel to him. That's just off the wall. Cuckoo. Um, God, they all bring something so cool to, to the, the table for their group. I got to say, I got to say Des though. That's good. What about you, Kyle? So you look like a tray guy to me, Kyle. You know, you're asking me like to pick my favorite flavor of ice cream. I love I love them all. You know, I, I love them all. You can't have <laughs> we can't have one without the trio. But if I had to boil it down to one, I think I'm a Wentz guy. I like Wentz. There's there's a special uh, bit of wackiness to him, just like me. You know, I, I'm a bit of a wacky guy. You know, I, I like Wentz a lot. I think he's great. But like, you know, if you're asking me like. Who's my favorite in-ring competitor? Not, you know, so much uh, the character. Uh, probably yeah. going to go with Wentz again. Wentz is my guy. Wentz All is right, my Wentz. Wrestle. But Wentz I, do, I do love Trey and Dez, too. Me, too. I, it's, I, I have a hard time picking my favorites. I think Dez was the first one I became friends with. I think he's the first one I talked to. I got to say Dez, just because we got a little more time uh, being buddies. So I, he's, a, he's a good dude. He's a great guy, man. I like Dez. I like Dez a lot. Um so I'm, I'm aiming for the original two at the pay-per-view. We'll see. I think clearly Trey is definitely going to make his presence felt here, though. Got to. He's got to. I mean, or, guys, we do the free bird rule. We do a free bird rule, and any three of them or any two can hold at any time. That's another option. So something yeah, to consider. That's another dimension to the whole thing. Yeah. Why something not? To, a little mystery. To yeah. So something to think about in regards to that. So we'll see where they go with it. Uh, next week, we're going to find out. We will we'll know fairly soon, actually. All right, so uh, real quick, we're in the back. Madison Rain tells Melissa Santos that even though she defeated Jordan Grace, the victory was marred with controversy because of Kira Hogan's actions. Kira interrupts her and tells Madison that she should go find her dark side. 
and um, she you know, and she said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna like like Kira found hers, you know, kind of found her attitude." So Madison tells Kira the rematch with Grace can wait because she's gonna show Kira how dark she can get. So Madison Rain getting a little a uh, little dark here, a little veteran knockout getting a little dark. Teach the youngin. So all right, guys, last segment of the night. Here we go. So Brian Cage heads to the ring. He gets he's very determined to compete at Slam Anniversary. Dr. Ariel is has not cleared him. He is out there and cutting a promo. And the Dr. Ariel, Ariel comes out, confronts him in the middle of the ring, basically saying, You're not cleared, you're not cleared, you can't do this. Cage says, Big Screw mistake. you. Big mistake. Cage says, Screw you. Picks him up and gives him a um <laughs> gives him the um F5. Oh shoot, F five. Sorry, my my bad. F five. And then while that's all going on, Elgin comes out, attacks him, sit out power bomb, buckle bomb. It's wild. I mean, he is beating the shit out of Cage. And at one point, he puts Cage through a table on the outside. Out. Yeah. On goddamn. I cringed because I'm like, this guy just came off an injury. What the Damn. hell are you doing? But dude, they they had the X's up. Callus was there. Elgin attacks Callus. I'm going to text Callis and he's about to beat up Callis. And they did that. that is a first. Big time. Big time. I, I think Kyle was, was very scared for Don on, on that. But, uh, terrifying. <laughs> Kyle, you, terrifying. Terrifying. But then there was a great shot, guys. This was the last shot of the night, basically, where, you know, Cage is out, right? So he's on the outside. Medics are there strapping him up. So Elgin's about to powerbomb Callis. He's got him. And they cut over, and Cage is rising from the apron through that bottom rope. And it's like, holy shit. He looked like such a badass. And they get in, brawl is on again, and we go off the air. What a great way to end that show. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, real quick, J-Bone, you hype for this match or what? I think that, that was the final push I needed to see. Hell yeah, man. Uh, I can't. I can't wait to see this match. Um, the buildup of Elgin has been gold. It, it's almost been a blessing that um, <clears throat> um, Brian Cage has been injured. Not that you want him to be gone, mm-hmm. but, but it, it gave this feud a little time be, because he did um, he did come in and get offered. You know, he go you know go straight for the championship. But then, you know, Cage is gone for a while, and then, uh, yeah, it's – this is going to be great. It's going to be fun times. Kyle, I know you're psyched for it, man. I know you're psyched for this one too, so it should be exciting. The problem is I don't know who to root for because I love Michael Elgin, and I love Brian Cage. That's yeah, the right? They're both prime for this belt, for the win. I don't know who to go for, man. The buildup we'll of the build up of El- Elgin has been so good and believable. He's you know he sent people to the hospital just like yep. everything he said he was gonna do, he did. Yep. No question. No question about it, man. But uh guys, that was it. That's that's the wrap up. That's June twenty eighth, twenty nineteen, Impact Wrestling. We got one more impact before we go home for Slamversary. We also got Bash at the Brewery, which I think is airing after Impact or before. Before the last impact goes on the air next Friday. And then Saturday you got Friday. The, what's yeah. that? Friday, Friday and Saturday they got uh, shows, and then um, and yeah, then which is funny. Paper. So they got two Impact shows in the same night. That's weird. That's gonna be one fun night. So I'm looking forward to to parking my ass and seeing watching those. That'll be fun. Bash the brewery. Then you got the Impact. Then you got the Saturday show, which is our, the co-op with RCW and Booker T. <laughs> Sunday the pay per view. So guys, exciting week coming up. Look for some good hype. I'm sure online, we should uh, we should see some really fun stuff as we lead into the final week. But guys, that's uh, that's gonna do it for us. Uh, Kyle, let's get some plugs here before no, we get out. No, no, whoa, no, no. whoa, whoa. You, you think we're just not gonna pick a scumbag of the week, Trent? Is that... I thought we could get away with. It. I thought we established no, you're no, the scumbag. No, Ooh. no, no. no. You, you're not. Ooh. You're not. You're not getting away with that. You fucking. Gar, what was it? Gar, gar, gar dude? Gunda, 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 Gunda. 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 You, you, you fucking Gunda, yeah. No, no. I, I think that uh, we have to pick a scumbag of the week real quick. We'll go around, and then after that, we need from now on, we need to pick an MVP of the week. How are we gonna pick a scumbag and not, you know, pick an MVP? 
That, that's my new thing here. So oh, let's man. let's let's pick a scumbag right. of the week, shall we? Oh man, go ahead. You kick it off, Kyle. This is your realm. Now, the humanitarian in me should choose Sandy Callahan for giving a woman a pile driver, but that's just not the case. The scumbag no. of the week has to be Michael Elgin for putting his hands on Don Callis. Don Callis is not an in-ring performer. He's a he's an announcer. What a yep. scumbag! Yeah, he is a scumbag total for doing that. Scumbag move. I think he was hmm. total scumbag for that. J Bo, who's a scumbag of the week? What a scumbag! I was gonna say the doctor for trying to interfere in the child's I was gonna use the business. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say the goddamn doctor. <laughs> it's a tie! That's alright. Uh, well, I'll pick somebody else. I'll, I'll go with somebody else. Uh, <laughs> you guys can both choose the same bag of scum. I mean, we could. Yeah, I'm gonna say I was gonna say the doctor. That's okay. I'll go with the doctor. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not gonna be like, no, man. I picked the doctor. You can't pick the doctor. No, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but the hero of the week is Don Callis for putting himself in, har- in harm's way. I'm gonna give it to Don Callis. Well, yeah, my, my MVP of the week trend has to be Follow Bob because Follow Bob yes. just show improves every week on TV. Whenever they put him on, he knocks it out of the park. Uh, Huge. Looking great with the weight loss. You know, he's uh. Get, getting to be a slimmer, slimmer bot, slimmer bot, but uh, bot. every time he's out there, he just knocks it out of the park. So, you know, if to choose from this episode, I gotta say, uh, follow bot is my MVP of the week. J Bone, you got an MVP? I think I do. Good, L- ladies and gentlemen, my MVP of the week is Killer Cross. Oh, whoa, whoa, for, controversial for, pick. For for walking into that church and not exploding into flames. Wow. And I hey. have to mention, uh, Impact Wrestling's <laughs> Twitter page put out uh, a preview for next week's episode. And uh, in the preview, in the quick little vignette, you see Killer Cross taking a drink out of what looks like, like a goblet. Almost like the... Uh, when you, go, when you yeah, when you go to church and you, you drink the the blood of Christ, uh, I, I believe he was <laughs> sipping on the wine. Oh man, it's pretty creepy. This is very creepy. <laughs> or was it? Or was it? Or was it something else? We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out very <laughs> soon, guys. <laughs> very awesome. soon. All right. All, right. All right, Kyle, where can the people find you? <laughs> You think they don't know at this point, Trent? It's KL underscore TNI on Twitter. Follow me. Send me booty pics. The whole nine. Yeah, booty pics will be fun. I like, I, I like to see people sending you booty pics. Yeah. Jay Bone, where can people find you? I'm going to send you follow Bob booty pics. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't you. <laughs> oh, what an you ass. You me over. <laughs> Well, not not slim follow. Uh, you know, I want fat want follow thick, from a few months ago. Thick I want ass. all that ass in my ass. In my ass. In my ass. <laughs> bad asses. Um, bad ass. <laughs> better one. That's a better. <laughs> bad ass. Bad ass. You can find me over over on the Twitter box at J Bone fifty one fifty J A Y B O N E fifty one fifty. You can find me on running the old. YouTube over on Smash This Podcast. Uh, there's also a Facebook Smash This Podcast, along with a brand new. Actually, the the Facebook and the the Instagram are all are both very new. So yeah, built just trying to build a brand. Uh, yeah, go uh, go give it a sub. Go give it a pages a like, and uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to get better at promoting. It's not easy. It's it's been inconsistent at best, but I'm getting better at it. I think. You'll get there, Jay Bone. Power of the Impact Lounge is going to get you oh, yeah. get you where you need to be, guys. Oh, it's they've helped out a lot. Trust me, I love very them. nice, very nice, guys. You can follow me at Vanilla Joke on Instagram and Twitter. Connect with me there, or Hemi Music H E M I M U S I C on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. That's the band. That's the band that's been featured on Impact, guys. There's another song in the works. Uh, can't really, really reveal details just yet until we confirm some more of them. Another potential saw in the works. I'll let you guys know what's going on. The Hemi is working with Impact Wrestling. We'll see. Fingers you crossed. Tell me this, Trent. I just listen. I just uh, breaking wow. news. Not confirmed yet. We're working. In addition to Decay, which was on Rebellion, 
We're working on something else. I don't think it's going to be for Slammiversary, but we'll see what happens. But uh, we never know. Never know. But, guys, you can follow this show at We Talk Impact on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just type in We Talk Impact. The total nonstop impact comes right up. You'll see it right there. Connect with us. Follow us. Whatever you got to do, give us feedback. We love it. We are very interactive, as you guys know. We are also featured on the Impact Lounge, as where you're listening, where you could be listening to this podcast on. Leave comments on the Impact Lounge. We reply to everything, and we even throw some on the show. So definitely interact with us, and also be sure to check out this podcast wherever podcasts are found: Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, and a bunch of others. We're on a ton of other stuff. Podbean is another one. We are on just a bunch of podcast platforms. Pretty much any popular one you can listen on we're on it we just added player.fm this week so check it out guys that's another one but yeah rate review subscribe tell a friend tell your enemy tell your grandmother tell your neighbor tell somebody who hates wrestling to check it out maybe we'll convert but guys that's uh that's it did i forget anything